Uh, tensions have escalated once again after Russia fired on and seized three Ukrainian naval vessels. A number of Ukrainian crew members were injured when Russian ships captured two gunboats and a tug. Each side is blaming the other for the incident, uh, with Moscow uh, saying that the captured boats had been trying to illegally enter Russian waters. Luke Barber has the latest. Tensions that have lingered on the Crimean Peninsula for the past four years have flared once again. According to Moscow, the captured Ukrainian boats had been carrying out provocative actions in closed Russian waters in the shared Sea of Azov. In response, Ukraine's president has proposed the imposition of martial law in what he called a defensive move during an emergency meeting of the country's military top brass. Martial law is introduced in order to strengthen Ukraine's defense capabilities amid increasing aggression and, according to international law, a cold act of aggression by the Russian Federation. However, speaking to Euronews just a few days ago, Russia's ambassador to the EU fervently denied the Kremlin was beefing up its military presence in the Sea of Azov. There is no militarization of the Azov Sea from Russia. There will not be and cannot be. Yes, the presence of the Coast Guard there is strengthened after construction of Kerch Bridge to Crimea, naturally. The rising hostilities are focused on the Kerch Strait, which connects the Sea of Azov with the Black Sea. It's where Russia has constructed a bridge to link Crimea with the Russian mainland. Despite a 2003 treaty which guarantees both countries free navigation in the Sea of Azov, Russia placed a cargo ship beneath the bridge to block the passage of Ukrainian vessels. Two ports on the sea's north shore are key to Ukrainian grain and steel exports. However, Russia has recently begun inspecting ships going to or from Ukrainian ports. <laughs> Kiev has denied its ships had done anything wrong. It has appealed to its allies to stand united against Russian aggression. Luke Barber, Euronews. Well, let's get the latest uh, on this uh, story with our correspondent Galina Polonskaya in Moscow now. Good morning to you, Galina. Uh, just last week, we had uh, Russian officials saying there was no militarization of the Sea of Azov going on. Is that still the Kremlin line now? Well, uh, that's how wars start, tweeted a very famous Russian TV presenter, also of various programs dedicated to life and work of Vladimir Putin. His name is Vladimir Solovyov and he is very important here in Russia. Maria Zakharova, the foreign ministry spokeswoman, uh, named this incident in the Azov Sea a pure provocation organized by gangsters, saying that first they provoke, after they use force and after they accuse of aggression. And Senator Alexei Pushkov said that this provocation was organized, was ordered by Mr. Poroshenko uh, because Mr. Poroshenko is lacking of votes ahead of the presidential elections which will take place in Ukraine next, the coming spring. Uh, now, Russia is asking for an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council. It will take place later today. And that it is clear that this incident is bringing the two countries to a new uh, edge of this conflict. And Moscow, uh, as it has been doing during the last 10 years, will be saying that all of this is a pure provocation and that it was not Russia that has started all of that. This now really is, is crunch time for Theresa May, isn't it? This is the political battle of her uh, career. Just talk us through what we're going to see before that vote in December and, and how it's all going to play out. Good morning, Belle. That's right. This is the sort of end game of Theresa May's political career. She is back here now in Downing Street, preparing for an emergency cabinet meeting in a couple of hours. And she will then go once again to the House of Commons. And we've got some extracts of what she will say. She will say uh, there is with absolute certainty no better deal available. My fellow leaders were very clear on that yesterday. So all of those EU leaders coming out were very helpful for Theresa May, apart from those rogue comments from from the French and Spanish that Darren was talking about. That unanimity is going to help her take this through the House of Commons, she believes, because she says if this deal doesn't go through, they go back to square one. It would open the door to more division and risk more uncertainty with all the risks that that would entail. So in the extracts we've got so far, she hasn't used that line, no Brexit at all. But I think she may well 
threaten that to try to get her MPs on side because really she's got now a mammoth task in the next couple of weeks. We think that on the 12th of December she will have that vote in the House of Commons and between now and then she's going to be going on a tour around the UK. She's going to try to sell this deal to people up and down the country. She's also, according to one newspaper, proposing a television debate with Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leader, to try to debate her deal. Now, I think she was very reluctant last year to do any of the TV debates during the general election. She didn't, in fact, do a proper debate. So I don't know whether we will see that or not. But Theresa May's uh, method over the past couple of weeks has been to look like she's constantly working. She's done radio phone-ins, she's done interview after interview on outlets that she wouldn't normally always do because she knows if she doesn't get it through the House of Commons, that may well be it for her premiership. There are still those letters of no confidence in. We think only a couple more of them would trigger a leadership election and then she would be fighting for her political life and fighting with her MPs to try to vote again on that deal because in her mind there is no other option and she says she will not bring in a second referendum as Prime Minister. So Theresa May will have to put on quite the performance today in the Commons and then she's going to be doing a very special version of the 12 days of Christmas to try and get the public behind her on this deal to put pressure on those MPs. Here in France, the finance minister Bruno Le Maire will be meeting retailers and insurers later today to assess the economic impact of the ongoing nationwide yellow vest protests, which are against rising fuel costs. French retailers have been warning that the protests risk hitting the Christmas shopping season and threatening jobs. Uh, the unrest reached new heights in Paris this weekend, where 101 people were arrested and 24 people injured in clashes in Paris's Champs Elysees. Brian Carter reports. Clashes erupted between police and some yellow vests. Authorities used water cannons and tear gas for several hours in order to counter the most radical protesters. While many regret these incidents, others believe these methods are the only way to be heard by their government. Honestly, what are they doing? They are certainly some rioters, but we're not responsible for that. We're just here to be heard. The problem in France is we don't have a choice. If we want something, we need to fight for it. They don't listen anymore. Emmanuel Macron was the main target of the thousands of yellow vests gathered this Saturday. But apart from the president, the whole French political class is criticized by the demonstrators. I'm demonstrating because it's not possible anymore. I'm retired and we can't make ends meet. I don't understand why the members of parliament have all these privileges. We don't diminish their salary. Who do you think we are? What are we? What are we? Are we sheep? Are we the dogs of French society? Is this why our ancestors fought? What started off as a movement against taxes on fuel morphed into a larger gathering against other types of tax, as well as to denounce the cost of living in France and social inequalities. But without a central structure, nor official representatives, the Yellow Vests seemed divided over what to do next. We need a citizen assembly. Citizens need to make the votes, referendums. We are the ones that should have a voice. We haven't decided on the future of the movement. We're just trying to be heard. We hope to be received by the members of government. The Yellow Vest we met this Saturday say they will come back to protest in Paris as long as their claims are not taken seriously by the government. Brian Carter for Euronews in Paris. Well, Brian is up early for us uh, in Paris at the Champs-Élysées. And Brian, good morning to you. We can see uh, the destruction behind you in, uh, in the Champs-Élysées. Was this the worst uh, escalation of the, of the violence since these protests started? Good morning, Belle. Yes, indeed, you can still see uh, signs of what happened here on Saturday, although pretty much all of the uh, Champs-Élysées has been uh, cleaned uh, and cleared up by now. Uh, you know, Bell covered many of these uh, uh, demonstrations in the past, but this one was uh, quite different. You had no central authority, no central structure, and a lot of these protesters were first-time protesters, and they were quite surprised about all, uh, from uh, all the tear gas that was uh, that was here. 
and there was so much of it that you could really feel it even in the side streets where you also had some uh, yellow vests. So it's quite a surreal uh, scene to see some tourists and, uh, and, and, and shoppers uh, mixed with these uh, yellow vests. So it was quite messy, uh, but uh, you had a very vocal minority that indeed uh, caused things like this. But most of the people, as you saw in the video, uh, was just there to express themselves. What really struck me, uh, Bell, is that they uh, really hate Emmanuel Macron, and I mean hate. I mean, in every demonstration, you're going to find people that criticize government and their policies. But here, they really detest Emmanuel Macron. They detest his persona. And it's a very visceral uh, feeling that they have against him. And all of the people that were here are calling on his resignation. Well, Emmanuel Macron is expected to respond tomorrow. He's going to announce new measures. Uh, will there be enough? Well, these measures are essentially to try to uh, calm uh, the anger of the French. There are measures to help, uh, for example, some of the poorest families. But he's probably not going to come back on this uh, controversial uh, tax on fuel, which was at the uh, beginning, uh, which started uh, this whole movement, uh, actually. Uh, and as the Yellow Vest, they said they would wait and see what he has to say on Tuesday before deciding on the future of the movement, but they uh, seem divided themselves. They failed to designate uh, rep uh, official uh, representatives, as they said they wanted to do. And there's already been a call on Facebook for a new uh, demonstration here next Saturday in Paris, and thousands of people have already responded that they would come back to Paris.